Hey guys, it's Nate Story here, and uh, today we're going to talk really quick about the different kind of LED light bars you can find out there. So if you guys remember back, we've talked about it in the past, I've introduced you guys to kind of the fixture type LEDs, and we've used those a lot in our growing environment. Um, Today we're gonna to chat a little bit about light bars. We love light bars, they're the right form factor for a lot of different growers and a lot of different applications. And so um, if you guys have seen the lighting guide, check out the lighting guide, the link is below. It is just a basic guide to all the different lighting types, especially LEDs, and it explains a lot of the things that I'm gonna talk about today. But the big thing that I wanted to hit on is that light bars are typically lower wattage because the getting rid of all of that heat requires these fairly complicated extrusions, right? So these LEDs can only heat up to a certain point. And beyond that point, we gotta get rid of the, that heat uh, so that they don't overheat and they don't lose efficiency or the life of the LED isn't impacted. So we end up with these really complicated extrusions, right? Um, this is just kind of a, a relatively inexpensive LED, uh, Chinese LED. There are actually some decent ones being made these days. Um, but by and large, you know, we stick with uh, the bigger name brand manufacturers because we know what we're getting, especially on the warranty side. But this is kind of an example of a uh, Chinese LED. And you can see this complicated extrusion here is really designed to pull heat away from the board. It's got some, uh, basically some um, uh, heat sink paste there between the board and the extrusion that's pulling that heat away from the LED and helping it to dissipate, right? You gotta get rid of it, keep those LEDs cool. So um, that's the primary constraint of most light bars. Now we're gonna talk about a few alternatives to that today, but um, this is kind of an important thing to understand about light bars and why you don't usually see big wattages on those bars. So most light bars are not actively cool. That means we can't get fans into them. We can't use fans to, uh, to cool these things, or usually fans aren't used. These are passive, right? So this is uh, the mounting for the LED here, and it is also the heat sink. The heat sink is housed inside of this. So we can't deliver a lot of wattage to this because any LED out there, I don't care who's making it, how efficient they say it is, it's maybe about 50% efficient, okay? So half of the wattage you're putting into the light goes out as heat, half of it stays there. And for these lights, they, over, they overheat really, really easily if we give them too much um, in the way of uh, current. So um, let's run through a few of these lights real quick and I'll kind of show you what they are. Uh, we started here, of course, with our Chinese LED, and there are some decent ones being made in China these days, but there's always a mixed bag, right? There's very little accountability between the seller and the buyer. So we do not recommend most Chinese LEDs to customers simply because how do you get the warranty work done? How do you know it's good quality? There's a lot of things you don't know. Um, this is kind of an interesting fixture here that we're really excited about. We're experimenting with it now. It's from Transcend Lighting. And this is a startup company. They're doing LED bulbs. They're doing really, really, really cool stuff. And um, so this looks like a T5. It's designed to fit into a regular T5 fixture. Um, so the ballast here is, uh, fits right into the, to, to the T5 fitting here. But you'll see this is an LED. There's, it's got a heat sink on the back. And they have kind of a, a pri 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 ugh, proprietary coating technology that they use to get really good spectrum out of these things. So we're trying these right now. We're gonna see how they grow, let you guys know. In the meantime, check them out. They're called Transcend Lighting. They're making some cool stuff. Um, and it's neat that it allows you to retrofit your old T5s when your T5 bulb goes out with an LED replacement. Very cool concept. So this is your old uh, Philips uh, T5, or no, not T5. This is the Philips Green Power um, LED light. They're good lights. They last quite a while. They're, they're good quality LEDs. Um, we like them. They're, they're, they're pricey. You know, they're, they're not cheap, um, but they're good quality. And uh, the ones they're making now actually have a metal housing. So this kind of cheap looking plastic housing is gone on all the new models. It's a nice looking uh, extruded aluminum housing for that. So that's pretty cool. Um, this, is, this is an interesting one. Now, this one is pretty much waterproof, right? You can see that they've used a potting mix there to seal all, those, seal all these LEDs. This one is from General Electric, and this is kind of one of their experimental fixtures, but um, they used these at the uh, Milan Expo this last summer, and it's totally waterproof. And the other really interesting thing about this that I haven't seen anywhere else that is really, really cool is that the, the shroud on this is diffuse. So instead of direct light, like with these LEDs, you get very direct light. There's nothing that's dissipating 
uh, scattering that light, right? Uh, and the GE one is very cool because it's a diffuse light and the plants really love that diffuse light. It's an interesting idea um, that I haven't seen very many other lighting manufacturers mess with at all. Uh, this is a, to be fair, uh, the Transcend one is a fairly diffuse uh, shroud as well. Okay, so um, this one here is a super cool one. Uh, this is from Intravision and they're building these um, really, really awesome lights. Um, they look pretty complicated, but really they're just designed to handle a lot of different LED types. And we'll get into this in the next video when we're talking about UV light in the growing environment. But these lights are designed to handle all sorts of different color LEDs, including UV light, uh, UVB. And um, they use them for a lot of different applications. We have um, run them a bit. Uh, they're, they're good lights. Uh, they seem to hold up really well. And uh, we're gonna continue to experiment with them and let you guys know how they go. They're brand new light. And they use, uh, the interesting thing about them is that they're two-sided. So these are really, really useful for vertical plane growers. So guys that are growing on the vertical plane, two sides facing an aisle. And um, they, they, they run pretty darn well. They're two-sided. And uh, the other interesting thing is that they use this uh, kind of silicone potting mix to cover those LEDs. So it's all sealed up. It's all waterproofed, uh, which is very, very cool. It's transparent. We'll see how it holds up against time. Um, see if it yellows at all and let you guys know. The last fixture is, of course, the, the tried and true uh, Luma bar. And this is one of the few relatively high voltage bars out there. And uh, the reason for it is you can see, uh, this one is a little messed up here, but um, you can see we've got the board in here. These are 185 watt bars, okay? So to put this in perspective, uh, this is, for both two sides, this is something like you know, I don't know, 130 watts or something like that. Um, so this is 185 watts for a single bar. This is uh, about three feet long. That is a lot of wattage to pack on to a light this small. And you can definitely see it in your production. You get really good production under these things. Now they are pretty pricey, um, but they're really great. And there are some places where you just have to have a bar light with this kind of wattage. Now you see they're able to do that because they've got this really complicated heat sink on the back. Um, this, this, uh, this thing takes care of all of the heat that's generated by those LEDs, which is really, really important because we are dumping a lot of electricity into this bar. So um, it's an important thing to know that when you guys have these uh, and you're running them, um, you get less heat with these things, but you're also oftentimes getting a lot less light. Now the benefit of a bar over a fixture is that a fixture, it's hard to get really even coverage over really big areas, right? But with bars, we can get really nice, even coverage because it kind of lays it out in this nice, long um, application of light to the growing surface. And so we like to stack these up and make them, uh, uh, put them side by side in a way that gives us really nice, even coverage. That is one of the big benefits of these lights. And the other is that um, we can get them a little bit closer because they're lower intensity. Uh, like with, uh, you've seen with the LumaGrow fixtures, we have to move them back and forth because they're very intense and we have to spread that out. With these, you don't usually have to do that because you can get them nice and close to the growing surfaces. And um, typically, uh, you can get really great production, production under bars so long as you really clearly understand their limitations and uh, how, how you need to lay them out to get good coverage. All right, so I hope this video was useful to you guys. I uh, hope this was a good introduction to some of the different lighting products out there in bar form, uh, LED lights in bar form for you. And uh, check out, leave comments below if you have questions. If you're interested in kind of the pros and cons, we're gonna do that in the next video. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons of these different bars and explain to you uh, what we like about them and what we don't.